Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome. My name is Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. Today's Sunday. So Sunday. I hope to inspire you to sew on a Sunday, which is today. But most people are watching the Super Bowl. So hopefully you're hand sewing and watching the Super Bowl while sitting on the couch. <laughs> or maybe annoying your husbands with your loud sewing machines sewing during the Super Bowl. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, it would work, huh? Let's see who is all here. Um, la -da 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 -da. I'm gonna make sure all this is going for me. Okay, we have Teresa K. Um, let's see, the farm on Highway J. Lori, Shelley, Mary, Linda, Sandy, Rena, Gloria. I saw it right there. Uh, Lori, Judy, Nana, Ronnie, Candy, Donna, Nan. I already said Nana, didn't I? Um, Geraldine, Shirley, Lori, another Teresa, Karen, Brenda, Marla, Melster, uh, Judy, Carol, So Terry, Christine, Lori, another Cheryl. Marie, Karen, Glenny, oh, Genny, G-E-N-I, or Jenny. That's probably Jenny. I'm going to assume that's Jenny. Um, as in, I've not seen that name before, but hello. Oh, it says Liz. Okay, so hello, Liz. Kathleen, March, uh, Simply Quilting with Nancy, Rosie, Lily, Michelle, and anyone else that I missed, hello, hello, welcome. I today had to pull something out to sew. So for a couple years now, I was working on my 25 patch blocks. If you guys don't remember, there's a playlist for 25 patch blocks on my main homepage of my YouTube channel. Well, I had tons of little cutoffs, little cutoffs from those 25 patch blocks. And I have made this bag of hourglasses from most of those cutoffs and the rest of all the cutoffs are from binding because they were all the same size. Anything that was a two and a half inch strip unit or a binding that was two and a half inches, anything that had a cutoff from a two and a half inch, I save those and turn them into hourglasses because I'm going to need a whole heck of a lot of these to make a big quilt out of these. So, so far I probably have like 250 maybe in this bag and then i have this box filled with triangles and this bin that has those triangles plus some big ones ended up in in this i don't know how that happened but it's all the triangles from whatever they were from all in all these bins that i've been slowly over the years i try to sew them together so that Someday I'll be caught up and I can actually make something with all of this because there's, there's so much, so much. So that's what I'm going to be sewing today while we hang out. So welcome everybody that's joining in. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm trying to keep some of these together. They are scrappy because this whole entire thing is going to be scrappy. So I'm, I'm mixing it up, but I'm also trying to keep like colors together to mix with other like colors you know in pairs of two or whatever you know that way i can blend it all see like these i don't think these came from a two and a half inch square some of these are in here they weren't from a two and a half inch square so i pull them out because well i want the ones that were from two and a half inch squares that way all my hourglasses will be the same size thereabouts in in that general area but i can tell on some of them when they look too short so i just pull them out and sew them so i'm trying to pull out some to start sewing but again i'm trying to keep two of one color and two of another so that way oops, where'd the bag go that way there's opposites and then they'll just get thrown together And that's what I'm doing. Those are white. Actually, those are off-white. 
Got to separate the off whites from the whites. Thank you. And don't ask. I will do a new room tour when I can. Right now, from this forward, you can't see it because it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. And my fabric room, well, let's just say a tornado happened in that room. <laughs> that room, I was working on it just a little bit ago. It's a disaster. <laughs> It's a big disaster. Yeah, I don't want to deal with it, but I got to because I got to get it done. Sooner or later, it's got to get done. Did you finish your half square triangle? Yes, 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 and I could show you that project. So uh, the last three Sundays, while the rest of my house was torn apart, and I didn't want to start a new project. Well, technically, I did start a new project. I just worked on that continuously. My little tiny half square triangles and four patches made Jacob's ladder blocks four made one big block, which is my, was my goal. And I put the rest of them together into this awesome piece. What do you think? Isn't that awesome? So I took all the leftovers and after putting the blocks together. So right here, this is a block right here, this unit right here. It has three borders on it to create this look. And that was all the last. I have not one single piece of fabric left over from this project. I used every last bit of it. So it's super awesome and colorful and I love it. I love the way it looks. I love it. So now I just need to quilt it up and hang it up because it's now going to be added to my lovely wall hangings throughout the house that are not hanging up at this time. What did you want? Oh. Oh, there is a video from the 4th of July of 2022. That, that is from that video. From the 4th of July. Yep, search my 4th of July videos in 2022 and you will see that quilt being made. So now I'm working on these guys and hopefully going to lessen this pile some more because, you know, all these piles are so darn full. All this, these containers that I need to empty them out finally. Off-white? Yep, those are off-white. Pretty sure these are the same ones, though. From the same fabric. <laughs> what? One lady said, you look very presidential with the flag hanging. <laughs> well, the reason why the flag is hanging, this actually right here, this wall, is going to be a design wall. So that way, when I make something, I can just put it on the wall, and that way you guys can stare at it to make it so much easier. See, I told you I was trying to spice things up in here and make it easier but for now i hung a clothesline well i call it a clothesline from shelf to shelf so that i can hang something to display behind me until i get the supplies to make my design wall because i want to do felt i think i want felt design wall so that's probably what i'm gonna why do i have squares in here i don't know um yeah so that's what i'm going to be doing is Probably a felt design wall on, um, what is it called? There's a word for it. It's soft and, and stuff. Uh, trying to think. My brain's not working. My brain's not working. It's called whatever. It's a board type stuff. And it, foam board. Aha, that's the word. Foam board with felt wrapped on the front so that way all the blocks stay and I'm going to try to be making a 65 by probably 80 a 65 by 80 inch design wall but 
I have to wait to do that because I don't have the supplies nor the money right now because we just had to pay for all new carpet. That is so squishy soft. Oh my gosh. And we have to do taxes. So yeah, but let's just say I have super soft fluffy carpet. It's a miracle. And all those companies that were trying to, you know, deter me away from putting a hard they didn't want me to put carpet in this room. They were like, you need to put hard floor in that room. I'm so glad I didn't put hard floor in this room. I stand for hours. Why would I want hard floor under my already messed up feet? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Scott talked me out of it. I thought about it for, you know, moving things around and sweeping up thread and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, most of those companies that came out to give us estimates on flooring, they were like, you should, you should, you should. And I definitely am glad that I didn't do any of those shoulds. All right, what's the question? Lisa's working on a new pattern. It's unusual for her. I'm wondering if you would be willing to do the unusual and make the pattern if you've done it before. Uh, in a video? Uh, I will have to yeah, say, okay, so she's. A YouTube channel and to get it out there for me. It would be a free pattern. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you something about making videos for um, patterns. I do do that, yes. But there is a wait list, a very long wait list of people who have been asking me to do specific patterns on my channel. So you'll have to wait happens when it happens depending on how hard it is or how long the video takes me to film I could do it so if you send it to me it'll get put on the list of patterns for videos okay, can I hand piece a legit kit? Uh, that's a paper piece kit I don't know how to do a paper piece kit by hand at all and I don't think yeah I don't think the legit kits kits were designed to do by hand but Scott did put a uh, link in for legit kits in the chat so that you guys can check it out and see what it says and what you think. I'm literally trying to make these piles when I should just be sewing them. That goes with that pile. I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. And this is just random. Then. Another random, another random. Some of these are just random in here. I should just get to sewing them together. But I kind of wanted to have more blended colors oh yeah and my long arm is back so for those of you that are waiting for things to be long armed job wise uh don't forget to shoot me an email and i'll let you know the price but i'm back on track now i'm behind but i'm back on track now that the frame is there so now i can get back to long arming on a normal schedule again Oh, hey, Katie, thank you. I love what I can see you newly made sewing. I hope you for a tour in the future sewing from South Greenland. I really enjoy your videos. Keep up the wonderful work. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That'll go towards my design wall. All right. Oh, I got a lot of this one. A whole heck of a lot of that one. Do you ever make little kids clothes? Uh, no, I don't know how to make little kids' clothes. I, oh, I barely know how to make... I made a dress, but I barely know how to do that. I made a dress in the past. I've made a maxi dress on camera, and I've made a shirt on camera. But I have not made... No, I made two little kids' pants on camera. Did I do those on camera? I don't remember. I'm not 100% sure about that one, but I did make little kids' pants before. Anyways, okay, that's enough for now. Let's start sewing some of this. Ugh, the only thing is my chair doesn't roll very well on this brand new carpet. It kind of wants to, you know, <laughs> go out from underneath me. So I'm going to have to watch from make sure that I don't fall or something. <laughs> All right. So I just take two of these and two of these of two different ones, and I put a triangle here, and I put the tip of the triangle in first and sew down that straight edge and then I take the flat side of the opposite and put that in under and chain piece them together so it makes a chain so these two go together 
then those two go together, and then those two go together. When I open them up, they will be on opposite sides of each other. I love chain piecing. I'll chain piece everything. Every project I could possibly think of chain piecing, I will chain piece it. Like I recently did an open gate quilts uh, video for their uh, uh, box opening, and I chain, piece, chain pieced paper piecing as well. <laughs> Not a full connected chain, but the, the way I did the video, I did it. <laughs> mixing everything up. Some of these are bigger than they need to be. So I also have to cut them because they're bigger than they need to be. That way I'm not doing it later. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful Sunday today. Scott and I, since we got the new carpet in and the other floors are done and everything's painted and everything's done, we decided to give the house a full, full on uh, cleaning. So we, he uh, vacuumed and mopped the floor. We dusted the rest of the furniture and brought it in because we dusted everything, bringing it back in because most stuff sat out in the garage for quite some time. So. Yeah, now everything is dusted and cleaned up. The kitchen table is back in the house now. So we could, you know, have a kitchen table that we put everything but eating on. <laughs> yep. Although I true. did although I did eat my lunch today at the kitchen table. I had I made myself an egg and um what you guys would call Canadian bacon because it's fried ham. I made myself egg and fried ham sandwich. Or otherwise known as Canadian bacon. Thumper also got a bath. And Thumper got a bath today because we did all that cleaning and he's shedding. So we wanted to make sure to fully bathe him. So that way his shedding is under control uh, throughout the house. Now that it's all clean. We washed all the blankets, all the pillow, everything. Everything's clean. And did I run out of bobbin already? I'm trying to use up all the last of... A lot of these bobbins. Yep. All right. Let's use up another one. We're going with the color red. I have decided to use up all the bobbins of all these different thread colors. Thumper like to take a bath. He used to not like Thumper used to not like baths because I used to bathe him in the actual bathtub. He hated that. But now that I bathe him in the kitchen sink, like today, he's getting so used to it today, I didn't even have to hold him down. He just sat there and I washed him and, and Scott didn't have to help me hold him down. As long so as, it's in the sink, as long as it's in the kitchen sink, if I did it anywhere else, if I gave him a bath anywhere else, he would be very pissed off. <laughs> oh, I can tell my tension is off. Just because I have two different thread colors. I have red in the bobbin and R fill grayish blue, grayish blue in the tap. Those are too light. Let's do these two. As you can see, I'm making different, lots of different colorways because this is going to be a very, very scrappy quilt when I'm done with it. be very fun. I try I want to try to get something super big out of it. Mm, let's go with this yellow. Can't tell what's the front and back of that or right or wrong side. Yeah, Thumper, he has to get baths because he's uh, losing hair, so. Yeah, everything was bad and dirty and all the moving and stuff, so now it's all nice and clean and he's clean, so it's a lot better. The house does smell like brand new carpet, too. <laughs> 
supposedly that smell. He said the smell will go away in a couple weeks. Yeah, it doesn't bother me, the smell. Some smells bother me. Most smells. I hate perfume. If you ever meet me in person, do not wear perfume. I get so irritated and my gut starts hurting and everything from the smell of perfume. It's horrible. It gives me the worst headache and a stomach ache. And I start coughing and wheezing. Ugh. Those together with these. This is so much fun. It's relaxing to just sit and sew all these up. I definitely enjoy sewing scraps. I definitely enjoy using scraps. <laughs> I don't just enjoy sewing them. I enjoy using them. So many things you can do with the scraps. And any of the scraps, anything that's left over from making a quilt, if it's big enough to sew it, use it. Trying to fix my tension at the same time, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see if this is correct now. I cleaned my machine earlier, so that's why my tension is off. Because I wiped around here and I, I loosened the, the tension disc. I loosened the tension disc all the way so that I can get my rag in there to clean it. Are you going to come say hi? Come and say hi, Mr. Thumpy. to get around the desk. In the, that boy. Yeah, the, Say hi, everybody. I'm clean. I Tell everybody I'm nice and clean and I smell good like coconut oil. Since I'm just a baby boy hiding all day in my <laughs> cave. People yeah. making so much noise I had to wake up and come out of my cave. Been hiding ever since these grown big giants gave me a bath. <laughs> Sure. You can take some. Oh, no. Actually, I have to sew them before I give them to you. Hold on a second. Let me sew some more, and then I'll give some to you to iron. Okay. That way we could show everybody technically what I'm making. All right, so I'm just going to come. Making, I'm coming. I'm making hourglasses. So I snip them apart. And it really doesn't, I don't have, most of these don't have a darker light, but I try to press them, finger press them to a dark color. Once they're together in sets of two, like this, all I have to do is put them right sides together, nest that middle seam, and I will be creating an hourglass. So I just snip apart two each time. Snip apart two. Press one side or the other. It really doesn't matter here because, again, it's just a scrappy quilt, but I try to go with the darkest color. Two more. And then snip that apart. Yeah. Check it all out. Yep, yeah, he has to put his scent on everything. He's like, okay, I've been in this room. He hasn't been allowed in the room since in the these two rooms yet, so.
because they were such a disaster and I had fabric everywhere. And the other room, he's not allowed in at all because that's my fabric room. And I keep him out of that one completely because when I make my quilts, I try to keep them pet free and I don't want them on my fabric. So this is what I'm making right here. So if I take this apart, you could see small little hourglass. I'm gonna just like finger press that to one side. So you can see they're just little hourglass blocks. You ready for me to iron? Um, not yet. Not yet. Let me make a couple more. Just taking them apart in twos. The part that takes the longest is the finger pressing in between. That way I can put them back under the machine. He's going to sniff it. <laughs> I haven't got that shelf filled yet either. I'm not done cleaning all the shelves up in here, as you can see. Obviously, all of my um, pre-cuts went back on the shelf that they always go on. What was in between here originally was a long... Um, like TV stand or whatever, it's considered a TV stand, I guess. Yeah. And it is now on the other side of the room. And this is my new pegboard. I painted it and I have my side things for it. So that, and that's side, the back things that keep it away from the wall. I'm gonna go over to uh, Harbor Freight tomorrow and pick up some pegs because they have a 50 piece peg set or whatever for uh, $6. So, Hey, why not go get me some pegs for my pegboard and everything can finally be cleaned up in here and be a lot uh, organized for me. Because <laughs> all of my pins that used to hang the rulers on the wall, all those pins and the paper clips that used to hold those up were always falling apart and falling out of the wall and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's going to be nice to have a pegboard. And I got that pegboard for free. The neighbor gave it to me. He was going to throw it in the trash. And I was like, no, don't. It's been sitting in the garage for like a year. <laughs> and I finally painted it. Can you do a close-up of how you make a triangle with your MSQ ruler? Close-up of what? How you trim the triangle with your MSQ ruler. Oh, like a half-square triangle? How I trim a half-square triangle. Okay, give me a second. And we'll put you on a different mount. All these little piles out of the way. Actually, Scott, can you just hold the camera? Yeah. Let me sew together a half square triangle. So as you can see, actually, I'll sew together two to make this um, right here to make it easier for you guys to see this. So I'm making two half square triangles to show you. Oh, well, we're just going to go with these two. I can pluck them out later. Because those are the same exact fabric put together. All right, just pick the camera out of there. Just slide it out of the hole, out of the slot, or do that. And zoom in. Okay, trimming with a ruler. A regular ruler. So we have a stitch line right here. Yeah, okay, they can't even see that. Oh. I'm looking on the screen. I don't see it. It's come way close. What can't they see? I see it. 
I don't see the stitch line. Anyway, so here's a stitch line right here. You're going to put your ruler. So say you want a three inch. Say you want a three inch half square triangle. Here is the three inch mark here, and here is three inch mark right here. You're gonna put that three inch mark here and this other one right here on the stitch line. You're putting it on the stitch line. Your three inch mark is on the stitch line here and on the stitch line here, just like that. And then when you cut away and you open it up, this is the same fabric, by the way. And you lay this on here after it's pressed. I think I pressed that a little bit better. You're going to see that I have a perfectly square three inch half square triangle. It's landing right there and right there. So I have a perfectly square half square triangle. Now, say I want a smaller ruler and I want a two and a half inch square. This is a two and a half inch ruler. So I'm going to take and line the corner of this ruler, the tip, at the two and a half inch mark and the two and a half inch mark here and the corner tip on the on my sewing line. I, I'm saying the wrong thing. And I'm just going to slice it and dice it. And when I open this up and press it with my finger and lay my two and a half inch ruler on here, you're going to see. I have a perfect two and a half inch half square triangle. There it is. So that's how you do that with a ruler on the corners. Oops, let's leave that there. Let's go over there. So hopefully you guys understood that. Let's snip these apart while we're here. No, that's fine. It was centered more, but that's fine. There you go. There's some more. Yep. All right. So that's hopefully you guys understood that. And you can do the same thing with these quarter square triangles, too. I don't know what size I want these yet. So that's why I didn't cut these and I just made two triangles to show you guys. These, I'm not sure how they're going to end up. They're probably going to be two and a half inch on their own, maybe. Not 100% sure at this moment. Oops, I'm just going to move it back up here. Because they will all need to be trimmed. They're really happy what? Yeah. Yeah, I do that a lot. I don't, it's, it's very rare that I open half square triangles or quarter square triangles or any kind of triangles. It's very rare that I actually open them up and sew them. I'm 100% just do it while they're in half and then press them because that's just, what I do. That's how I'm used to doing it. And I started doing that a long time ago where I kept them folded in half. You can also use like a, uh, if you have the small, oh, what is it called? <sighs> the ruler is not on the wall, so I can't look back at it. It's the, well, I can't think of it. It's a ruler that's already a triangle. If you have one of those, line up the number on that. You can use that too. The strip tube ruler. If you have a strip tube ruler, you can use the strip tube ruler as well to trim half square triangles. And they also make a slotted trimmer or uh, perfectly slotted, perfectly slotted trimmer. I actually have those now, and I'm 
probably going to start using it. Clearly perfect sluggish. I mean, yeah, that's how it's worded. It just said it. Clearly perfect yeah. sluggish. Why wasn't the word coming to me? I don't know. I have noticed, I noticed, Scott says no matter what he doesn't notice, but my sewing machine isn't as loud being, it's now not against a wall, so it isn't as loud being away from the wall. It's probably because it was echoing with me being against a wall. Yeah, but this way you can't walk around your desk. The other way I can walk around the desk. I can walk around the desk just fine. Yeah, but I'm just going to this. Nobody put Scotty in a corner. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll just have to put the ironing board that way more, and your side to sit over there. We haven't figured out the logistics of where then Scott we're have to walk sits. You, for what? What do you have to walk behind Humphrey me for? Over. Humphrey, over. Humphrey usually comes over on his own, oh. though. Oh. And if you did, he comes to the door. You can bring him right here. There's so much walk room right there. Yeah, but you're just you can tan him anyway. No. <laughs> you just put him on the desk. Welcome everybody that's joining in. How many people are watching? There's a lot of you here. Lots of you here, even while the Super Bowl is on. I don't watch football, so I don't I don't get it. <laughs> I guess it's just something to be happy about and watch. But I'd rather watch all my friends on YouTube, you know. Earlier I was watching Teresa. And before that I was napping to Ian. <laughs> I just put him on the TV <laughs> while I took a nap. And then I set the timer to turn off <laughs> on its own. Whether he ended in that two hour period of time, I'm not 100% sure of that. Still looks good to me. Oh. Do you move from where you used to sit, Tess? I am moved from where I used to be. I used to be on that corner of the room behind the camera now. Now I'm on the side of the room that was always behind the camera initially. So yes, I moved. My desk is now in the middle of, well, it's not really in the direct middle of the room, but it's in the middle between walls. So that way I can walk all the way around it. I can set my cameras up in any position all the way in, in any angle around the desk now for when I film videos. And there'll be, there in the future, very shortly, hopefully, there will be a design wall behind me. So anytime I make something and I'm explaining something or whatever, and we make more than one of said blocks or something, it will go on the design wall. And when I'm working not on camera, the design wall will come in handy so that I know where I am. few more of these and then I could start making some more combos. I 
Any questions? Yep, I will give you guys a room, new room. It's the same room, just updated. I will give you guys a new room tour when I get done putting things in places and, and organizing. Because right now, like I said, I pretty much threw everything in the closet. I threw everything in the fabric room. Uh, I haven't organized nothing. And does any quilt room ever, is it ever fully functioning? I mean, there's some mess everywhere. And does it always stay the same? No, rooms move around. So this may not be my permanent way I keep things. I You never know. We all hope not. We, Scott's like, we hope not. You don't want to move anything is why. No, everybody that came in here doesn't like your desk the way it is, but you. But we ain't moving it now. It weighs too much. Tell me your desk is a five-piece desk. Yeah, my desk has too many pieces and weighs too many pounds to move it again. It was very hard to move this desk. It had to be completely taken apart just to get it out of the room. But it is a heavy duty desk, and the vibrations of the sewing machine don't mess with it. So, what's the size of your Schmidt? What's the size of what? Your Schmidt. Oh, these are all from two and a half inch um, squares. No, I think she means your little cutters. She oh, these, from and got these are the kind that come from Amazon. If you got minis, I don't know. I've never seen any smaller than this, honestly. Put it up against your hand. How big is it? Is yeah. It like the size of your hand? If it's on the palm of my hand, it goes above my middle finger. If it's on my middle finger, it sticks out by the blade. So the actual red spot on this is as big as my middle finger, which is the longest finger on my hand. So it's pretty small. But yeah, those are the kind that come from Amazon. All right, that came from that pile, most likely. Yes, it did. Let's do some cherries. And let's do some gray fabric. And let's do the rest of these guys. And what other color? Well, let's do the last of those. And some gummy bears. And some, those don't look like they were two and a half inches. You know how I'm measuring? This is a two and a half inch width ruler. And if I lay this at my two and a half inch mark and it doesn't touch corner to corner, then, or even a quarter inch away, then it's not the correct size. So that whole stack is another stack that's from a, probably two and a quarter inch. Um, yeah, so this goes to a quarter inch right before. That's cutting off of the quarter inch away from the corners those let's do some white let's do the rest of those let's do these two right here and some of these greens these two right here let's mix these greens with this guy oh come on roll chair so so much do you ever lose your sojo um i prevent myself from losing my sojo by sewing all the time but I don't sew every day. Everybody thinks I sew every day. I really don't sew every day. I sew when I feel like sewing, which also stops me from not, I don't ever lose my sojo because I don't, I don't think of quilting that way. It's also therapy as well as a hobby. So I kind of, it balances out and I don't lose it. I don't lose the want or desire. Now on the long arm, I do, lose my quilting joe <laughs> because uh every now and then it's like i get a job or something comes in or it's something that i made and i'm doing i'll get ready to load that and i'm like i don't want to do it i don't know what to do and then i'll go four five six days thinking about it and then i'm like nah, screw it and then, then i stop thinking about it period and then yeah I pretty much lose my quilting Joe <laughs> quite often. What? Oh, Vicky, thank you. You're more interesting to watch than football. <laughs> Here's a little pocket money for snacks. 
I think I'm more interesting to watch than football too, but then I don't like watching football. So at all, I, I don't see how people get so excited over it. That's just me not okay. understanding. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, if I have to iron things right here, but Scott has got a, an ironing board and everything on the other side of the room. So he can iron over there. But if I have to show something specific or do something specific, or when I make videos by myself, when I film, Scott doesn't usually help me. He did with Scullover, like some of the videos of Scullover. If you don't let me. But when I film, I don't want him in here because I like to do my own thing and he just gets in my way. So when I'm live streaming and I need a, a lot of stuff, you know, pressed or something, then he can just do that. Okay, you have some videos where you make quarter square triangles with cutoffs from two at a time, half square triangles, I think. I really like the method and haven't been able to find it again. Okay, repeat that. You made some videos where you made a quarter square triangle with cutoffs from two at a time, half square triangles, I think. I really like the method and haven't been able to find it again. Two at a time, half square triangles with cutoffs. I if you do two at a time half square triangles, both sides is a half square triangle, so there's no cutoff for that. Okay, you would make said, two at a time half square else. triangles, flip them, and then make two at a time quarter square triangles. Now that I can do, and I've done. Okay, what videos? We can't find it. Do you have any idea? I have no idea because I just named my videos whatever I name them. So. Like today's video is sewing quarter square triangle. Well, tell them if they know in around when you did it. If you know around date. when I did it, yeah, you can look it up by date. Yeah. Up in a certain month and just go yeah. through those videos of that month. Yep. So if you knew I did it in a, in a September, then go look in September's videos. You know. If you know I did it on a So Sunday, there is a whole entire playlist for So Sundays. Oh, that was right sides. Okay. That is a very not tell of the wrong side from the right side fabric. Oh, it is brighter. It is brighter. I suppose I can. Um, yeah, uh, just just letting you guys know, just for those that are, I never ask for anybody to donate. I, I don't ask for that. You do it on your own free will. But if you want to donate, there is better ways than using the YouTube, what is that called again? Super Chat. There's better ways because Super Chat is going to take 60% of what you just gave me. YouTube just keeps YouTube keeps it. It's their I don't know why they even started that and took takes the money from it. But in my description below every video, there is two links. One is a GoFundMe and the other one is PayPal. And those take less. They only take what? Four percent. One takes three point six nine six or whatever. Or but they're both about three or four percent but YouTube takes most of it so just thought I would let you guys know that for those that are curious Tell them either way yeah either way problem. you don't have to donate I never expected it and I left the the super chat thing on because some people like to but I'm just saying I just figured you guys should know I don't know why YouTube takes so much of it I'm the one that's creating the the content and the video at that moment during that live stream. I don't know why it has anything to do with, you know, them. They get money from me any other way through YouTube. But I thought I'd tell you. All right, let's do some gummy bears with some cherries. <laughs>
okay, good one, good one. There you go. Some of them are from right at that fold when you make binding. So they uh, have a fold in them. That's why I never started one of those, uh, staying on that conversation for a second, one of those um, channel membership things because YouTube takes the money from that, most all of it. So if it was like a $1.99 YouTube membership, they'd probably take almost everything and I'd get like 40 cents of it, you know? So that's why I don't do YouTube memberships. Plus, I don't want to have to make extra videos or extra content or do extra things just for one said group of people when I can just do it one time for everybody. If that makes any sense. That way, I'm not stopping anybody from seeing everything. And I don't, I don't mind the people that do those things, obviously, because I have friends who have those. But I don't, and I won't. Becky's got a quilt. I bet she watches you while she crochets because you're so soothing. Aw, thank she you. She thanks you for your Sunday support. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know how to crochet. I don't want to know how to crochet, but I'm, I'm assuming that crocheting is a very relaxing thing to do. Uh, can I make a mosaic quilt with charm squares? You can make a mosaic quilt quilt with charm squares for sure. You can make whatever you want with any fabric. Oops, don't go that way. I'm trying to make sure that I'm turning one right side, one the opposite way. Talking kind of distracts me just a little. <laughs> Furry beast. Yeah. He's just behind me purring. I know. He's now he's underneath that shelf again. He really likes that shelf. Maybe it's his spot. No, not when it has stuff on it soon. I know. <laughs> he's stealing it there. That's yeah. Okay, Mr. Cooper, what are you doing? At least he likes the setup of my room. <laughs> if he likes it or not, this is the first he's seen it. He's exploring. Yeah. You can tell him whether he likes it. All right, let's put these cherries with this purple. Oops, go that way. I love your flag quilt. Well, last 4th of July, this past 4th of July, if you go to this past 4th of July's video, just type in Tiffany's Quilting Life and then put the date because it was, what did the 4th of July fall on this year? Was it a, I don't know, 4th of I don't July, know. 2022. Just type in 4th of July 2020, you know, uh, 2022 and you will get the video that I did to make that flag quilt. Or also, can't they just put in the month? Yeah, you can put Tiffany's, Tiffany's Quilting Life and then put uh, 7 uh, 4 2022 and you'll see. That will come right up. Okay, yeah, it was made on July 3rd on a Sunday. Yeah. July 3rd. Perfect. There you go. I need more color. I need more color. Okay, it was quarter square triangles made from one half square triangle. And then the other pieces were added one at a time. So Does that sound familiar at all? Yep. Yeah, I've done that quite a bit, so I can't tell you exactly what video they're from. Unfortunately. Mom, Hi, Mom. 
All right, let's separate some. Oh, here is another. Where I saw two. Let's see. Definitely get two of those. Oh, here it is, right here. Two gummy bears. Those guys, that's not too small, but this is. I keep coming across these. I don't know how these little, little ones got in here because when I made all these pieces, I could have swore all I was doing was putting the two and a half inch binding pieces in here. Yeah, it was Stumper, most likely. He, he's the culprit. He was probably distracting me, and that's why it ended up in these spots where they ended up. Oh, that's all from the Christmas quilt <laughs> from this year from Quiltmas. More purple. These are all red, white, and blues. Color, a pretty color there. Oops, I believe that pretty color there. Black. Two of those. Tone on tone. I don't see any more of that. White. Thank you guys. I like my room color too. So it was not. <laughs> Here's a little thing about this room. We bought, this is about actually the whole house. We bought paint for this whole house. Well, for the living room and for this room. So we bought a light color for this room and a darker color for the living room to go with the floors, you know. We bought four cans of what we thought was the living room paint because that's a bigger, huger space and only three cans for this space. Turns out we bought four cans of the, the what this room's color and three cans of the living room color. So when I was at the doctor's one day, Scott started the painting and he grabbed what was the four cans. So we screwed this up at the store. He got the one that had four cans, which turns out he text he texted me a picture and he said, this is not right. This is light. This is not right. And he's painting, but he had already finished almost a whole entire wall. So what were we going to do? Paint over it already again? So we decided to keep going with that color. And then those other, the other color, we were like, well, I don't really want to paint that room this color. You know, I don't, I didn't want this room that other color. I wanted it the lighter because color it too dark. because you it was too it dark. dark. Okay. So then we had paint left over. So we had a can of the light left over and then I bought a can of white. Dining room and the hallway. Yeah, the we painted color. the dark color in the dining room and the hallway. So I uh, we had one can of the light, which is the living room color that was supposed to be this room's color. We had one can of white paint that I bought for all the furniture that I was gonna paint, but I actually didn't paint as many pieces. But I did paint my pegboard with that white color. But we needed one more thing of paint because this room took a lot of paint. So we went and got another thing of dark paint like the living room or like the dining room color. We decided to put that with the two whites, the dark color with two gallons of white. And we mixed it up thinking, we both thought, me and him both thought that this would be light. And this is what happened. It's even darker. It's, it's even it darker. made it even darker than the initial color by using white, two light colors, a really light and a white mixed together with a dark and it made it even darker. So this is the color that ended up and Scott started painting. He's like, are you sure? And I looked at it and I'm like, and then he's like, well, are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. So he did one whole wall and I took my cell phone and I turned it on camera. I turned the camera on and I held my body in front of it in the, the camera in front of me and looked and I stood out. My whole body stood out. And that was the goal with the paint anyway, was during filming, for me to be highlighted no matter which area I'm standing in, where I don't blend in with the surface, I stand out with the surface. So I went for it and we did the whole room this color. So it's our accidental color that I named Monsoon and the carpet is Storm. So it's like perfect. I have what my favorite thing is in the summertime is Monsoon in my room. <laughs> but it was an accident. 
it all happened by accident because we both thought it would turn out lighter. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> but this is this is a nice color. I like it. I, I think it turned out amazing. I like, you know, I like it. And it looks amazing with the carpet. Even Scott said when the room was empty and you couldn't see anything, he's like, wow, the carpet looks really good with those walls. It does. <laughs> It, it, it looks amazing with those walls because our carpet is a not a dark, dark gray, but a medium gray. And it looks amazing. It feels amazing, too. Let's just say it feels amazing. But yeah, it's a. It's nice. It's a nice carpet. That's what your mom said. It was a happy accident. Yes, it was. It's definitely a happy accident. Turned out amazing, though, and I love it. So I'm not going to repaint over it. There's no purpose, you know. So we went with it, and that's what it is, and that's how it's going to stay. And I will have a, um, soon, as soon as I'm done completely with everything, I'm going to have a vlog. A video log about the whole process of remodeling a house because of termites. Because <laughs> remember, we did our whole house. So, well, except for the kitchen, but we're not done. We have paint for the kitchen still. So, because, yeah, we're not done with that. Unfortunately, we took a break from all that stuff and focused on just getting the main rooms done that were being with new floors. But next is painting the kitchen. And remodeling, not remodeling, no, but remodeling re that for a refurbishing time. the kitchen to make it look a little bit uh, You're better. You're getting paint. That's about it. For well, that. it's refurbishing. Same thing. Oh, no, go that way. Turn around. Pay attention. All right, let's put that for you. Yeah, your mom says updating. Updating. There's the word for it. But yeah, we we lived through all this redoing of the house. And it looks like a brand new house in here. It looks nice. It looks nice. You would never know walking in that it's the same house. It looks completely different. Just changing the floor color, the wall colors. It looks completely different. We didn't buy any new furniture or anything like that. We just changed colors and that's it. And it looks way, way better. Do you have any sewing notions that you can't live without or just stumbled on and love? Sewing notions that I can't live without or just stumbled on and love. Well, I was sent a quilter's select ruler and the just stumbled upon this oh shit shower handle yes i said that out loud but that's what these are and the combo is amazing i can't live without having the handle on my quilter select ruler which is a non-slip ruler i love that thing so that's one of the things the second thing i can't live without is my martelli rotary cutter i love that thing i love that thing very much so it is an amazing rotary cutter I don't have any other ones that I just stumbled upon, though. Trying to get some of these. Is my phone vibrating? Oh, it sounded like a vibrator. When it does that, it wiggles the screen. I rewatched a replay and the screen was vibrating. <laughs> little bird. Loved what? The needle threader bird. So oh, I yeah. Use. I love my little needle threader. I know how to use the needle threader on my Juki, but mine, well, I cleaned it today, so it actually goes nicely. <laughs> but on a normal basis, it, uh, doesn't go smoothly for me, let's just say. And this seems easier to use. So yes, I have 
a little bird needle threader, and I love the darn thing. Yes. Of all rotary cutters, I think that I've ever used, and I've used tons of different ones, and I'll show you as an example. And Scott put a link in for the thing, for the cutter, for the. So I started off. This is says paper on it because I only use it for paper products. I started out with the grip handle type like this. I I don't know. It closes your blade really easily. You just squeeze it, but it didn't feel right in my hand because. The notch on here is for your first finger. You're supposed to be able to use it this way, but it doesn't feel right in my hand. And if you use it this way, it's like you're jabbing. So technically, most people are using these the wrong way. You're supposed to just do it like that. But I didn't like that. Then I moved to the Singer Cutter. But this thing is uh, really a hassle after a few years to get this thing back and forth. It requires some strength. But this is also one of those kind of things where you still can't hold your hand properly, no matter how you hold it. My hand is sitting, so if I put my first finger in the grip area, like it's supposed to be, and my thumb on the front side, what's happening is the whole handle is sitting in the palm of my hand. When I had carpal tunnel, it was so bad that anything pushing press pressure in this part of the palm of my hand actually made my fingers go numb faster which is the, the, what carpal tunnel is. Then there's this guy. I use this with my left hand because my left hand, it sits perfectly fine. But again, it's big, it's bulky. It's a 60, but still, even the other Ulfa ones are gonna be like that. But when I got this, your hand naturally fits in it correctly. It sits across the whole palm instead of in the crease of your palm. It sits across the whole entire palm and not even that. It's at the, the top part where your fingers fold. Your first finger sits on it correctly. Your thumb goes in the little groove that's built into it and your hand and wrist adapt in sit down and stand up positions perfectly. So that's one thing that I will never live without now is this cutter. So if this breaks completely, I'm getting a new one. I don't care what anyone says because these guys, are definitely, they're great for those of you who need to use these. And I still obviously use my 60 left-handed when I cut through layers as my starting cut. So, I mean, I still use it, but you see how it holds in the hand if you use it correctly. If you're not using it correctly, you're jabbing, you're stabbing. That's not correct. That's not how you cut. If you're using it like this, that's not how you cut. Your hand is in the wrong position. Your wrist is in the wrong position. Same with the rest. So. That's why I switched to this. Cannot live without it. Video where you're showing how to put bias on corners. Bias on corners. Binding. The videos where I'm doing binding, just type in Tiffany's Quilting Life and then the word binding right after, you'll get like 500 videos. I've done it on So Sundays. I've done it on regular videos. I've made videos just about binding. I've made lots of binding videos. Um, bias binding or bias, it's the same thing as regular binding. You still put it on the same way. I don't cut it the same way though. Bias binding is cut on the 45. And I have, I don't know, I have made, I've cut on, I've made it in a video where I've cut on the 45 for bias binding. It's, uh, it's in one of my open gate quilt, no, two of my open gate quilts videos. I did bias binding on them. But yeah, I've done that. There's videos of that. I have over 950 videos on my page, guys. So, and some of them are not viewable. So let's just say 900 videos on my YouTube channel. So if you're looking for something, I may have it because there is a lot of videos. I've been doing these so Sundays for like four years now. So, or five years, four years. Yeah, because we just did the, the up thing where I looked. How long ago I started it? Yeah, four full years of So Sunday videos. What's the spring for the 45 for Kelly Cutter? The spring? spring there is a spring on the backside inside of there that holds this 
to open your blade and expose your blade. If you break or lose that spring, you may need to get a new one, but Martelli sells the parts that you need, just like there's a well, part in here. It's, it's tethered from Australia. The you gaffer. Can't find them. It says they're eight dollars in the US and it's a tethered one. Oh. I, don't, I don't know what the spring is. Yeah, there's a spring in there. You know, you're probably better off just buying a whole new Martelli cutter, honestly, than dealing with it that way. I'm pretty sure you can get it where you are. If just the spring broke. But if the spring broke, you really don't have to have this closed. Just put it together with it open at all times and just make sure when you lay it down that your blade is down. Because the spring, all it is, is to close the <coughs> the blade stopper. That's all it is. It's just that closure piece so that you can open and expose your blade. That's all that spring is. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a cough, and I was sucking on a cough drop before going live, and now it's all the talking is making my cough <coughs> back. Does the Martelli allow you to push down parts of multiple layer cutters? Yeah, but you shouldn't have to push down hard on any blade, on any cutter, any brand, because a sharp blade cuts through multiple layers because it's a sharp brand new blade. But if you're cutting through multiple layers, get a bigger cutter, a 60, a 60 millimeter blade is better for multiple layers than a 45 is. So, but if you're pushing down too hard, that means it's time to change your blade or get a new cutting mat because that is not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to have to be pushing hard. <coughs> I don't want to kill you guys with the sound of my coughing. I have a slight cold, coffee cold from all this work and the dust. You should have seen the dust that was underneath the carpet. The carpet has been on the ground since 2008, and it was horrible. <laughs> there was so much we had to clean up. I actually had to wear a mask because I was already getting sick just from emptying the house out, you know, and, and opening everything up. I should make some of these with yellow. <clears throat> I do have another cough drop, but I shouldn't be. No, you can use. You can use any blade that has the correct hole for this rotary cutter. You can use any blade. You don't have to buy the Martelli ones. I, it's recommended that you do, but you don't have to. Do your scissors out to be sharpened, or how do you sharpen your scissors? I don't sharpen my scissors because I use cheapy scissors. Mm. These dollar store scissors Scott bought me in the beginning when I first started. I needed scissors and these are the scissors that I got. And I've had them since I first started and they still cut like butter. So I've never had to have my scissors sharpened. And I have scissors at every station so I'm not always using the same scissors. Now my snips on the other hand. I already broke a pair. So now I'm trying not to use them as much. <laughs> See how much longer they last me. Oh, let's do yellow again. Yeah, I definitely uh, don't go through scissors like other people. The other pair of snips that I have like this, I use it my hand sewing. And um, I actually use the hand sewing snipping more than here because I have my thingamabobber, this thing, my cutting gizmo. I have this, so I don't really need to use scissors or snips very often. And I have a um, the one that looks like a ninja flower, too. I have that one as well now for a different sitting area when there's more than one person sewing in here. Well, you have tons of pairs of scissors. 
Yeah, I have tons of scissors. He bought me a 10 pack. Some weren't for sewing and quilting, but all the little ones that he bought me, one was designated to my room for cutting things like the collars off of t-shirts because I don't like collars on t-shirts. So I designated it for that. The other one is house scissors only. I have a pair in here for that's paper only. I have ones that for fabric only. They're everywhere. I have snips everywhere. So that's probably why I don't have to get them sharpened too because I, you know, rotate all of my scissors. And I use them for all the, you know, everything has its own purpose for certain pairs. Two more. Let's mix these with. I don't usually cut my binding on the bias. I'm going to scallopy quilt edge for the first time. Do I need to cut binding on the bias? You do not. If you're gonna, oh yeah, if you're gonna be doing scallop, sorry, I had a brain fart. If you're doing scallop binding, you have to cut it on the bias. You need to be able to go around the curves of your scallops. So you definitely need to have bias binding. Yeah, we don't have no honey or any or brandy, brandy because drink. we don't drink. That's one thing you guys probably don't know about me. I do not drink alcohol. I am, I can't say I'm 100% against it. It's you do you. So. But I don't like the taste of wine. I don't like the taste of alcohol. I did try. Um, I have stomach problems and I've always had stomach problems. So I did try a hack of using, uh, what is it called? Blue agave tequila. And one shot before bedtime to get rid of the bloating from my bad belly problems. And that worked for a while. But every night I was sucking it up to take a shot of this stuff that burned my throat and made me feel like crud <laughs> but I did that for a whole entire year and then I said enough's enough and I stopped doing it because the alcohol was expensive as well because it was the blue agave tequila and yeah so I stopped doing that and but I don't like alcohol I don't like when people get drunk I don't like any of that I'm very weird but I smoke yes and I don't like that Oh, there's more of those. Look at that. There's more. Where did that throw it? There it goes. That white. That black. Hmm. There's some ones. Like some of these still have the selvage on them because I just cut the binding ends away and I never finished cutting the selvage off of them. So some of these have the selvage on them, so I gotta cut those away. I have only cut binding on the bias. Am I doing something wrong? Um, no, you're not doing anything wrong if you've only done it that way. It's no big deal. But I cut mine on the straight of grain. I've always cut my binding on the straight of grain unless I'm doing something with curves like making a trivet or something it's rare i make things with curves though and i don't scallop borders anytime ever <laughs> i've done it a few times but i haven't done it in a long time some of those together still trying to almost done separating all this Just a little bit left to separate. Some of these need those ends cut off. All right, let's put two of these, two of these, and then we'll start sewing them together in the twos because there's a big chain piece lot here. Like I said, I'm trying to get these caught up. That's what I said in the beginning. I'm trying to get these bins caught up so that way maybe I can hope that I have enough of these, like I said, there's about 250 in here ish, somewhere around there. I'm hoping there's enough to make a nice big quilt with them. I don't know what exactly I'm going to make, and I don't know if I want to add. If I cut these down to two and a half inches, then I can take my two and a half inch pre cuts that I make myself 
and put every other one together. I think that would look super awesome. But I'm not 100% sure I want to trim 250 quarter square triangles to two and a half inches. Do we get bulk needles on Amazon? Um, do no, I don't buy my needles on Amazon. Um, the last purchase was made through a friend who uses a, whatchamacallit, what is it called? What is it called? Um, um, in the past? Huh? Yeah, I mean, you normally use eBay in the past. eBay, yeah, but I buy organ needles. No, I use uh, Superior Threads. That's where I've been buying my organ needles. Oh, okay. Yeah. I buy them by the 100 pack, but this last time I bought them through, um, what's her face's uh, wholesale account. I bought them through a friend's wholesale account because it was actually cheaper than buying from um, the Superior Threads. What, huh? In the description below the video. So if you drop the chat away, get rid of the chat. And then below the video, there's a thing that a button that says more. It'll say the name of today's video and then blah, blah, blah. And then it says dot, dot, dot more. You hit that and it'll open up a whole entire thing that has tons of links, all my affiliate links to help support my channel um, and so on and so forth. It has all that in, down there in the des description. There's, yeah, there's a PayPal and there's a GoFundMe in that as well if you want to donate to my channel those are those things that are down there but you don't have to i don't expect it but people have asked me in the past so i set it up so that everybody can do it yeah. if you want to all right i'm gonna stop sewing these sections together and start sewing them together into segments I was wondering, like, you have done, how many UFOs do you Okay, from started projects or fully finished UFOs? As in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I have 30 finished tops and only 500 started projects. <laughs> I have started projects everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I start tons and tons of stuff. Some of these were sewn together already. Where's the start for that? Mixed. They got tangled. I'm dropping things. Bias binding harder to sew on. Bias binding is a little bit harder only because it stretches. So you have to be very careful with this. I don't know why anyone would use bias binding on a straightaway quilt, though. I would always use straight grain for that. But if you're doing curves or making oval stuff like the, you know, under the Christmas tree skirt and it's around, you need to do bias on that. Yes, it's harder. Yes, it's harder because it stretches. All right, those two okay, have you ever used go together. For That's what I use now. <clears throat> that is what I'm using now is titanium. I switched to titanium blades almost a, a full year now. Or needles, sorry, not blades. I want to do titanium blades. That would be nice too. Yeah, the needles, um, I've, I'm finding that it's lasting longer. Yeah. Yep, yeah, the needle is lasting a little bit longer. So I'm snipping these apart in sets of two. 
Oops, why did I say that there when that's going there? So every two is a set. And then I just sew those together. This is a lot of work here, guys. Hopefully, this project will be just as awesome as any other scrappy project that I make. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that's pretty much all I do is scrap projects? <gasps> I love my scraps though, but every once in a while I choose nice coordinating fabrics and work with those. But lately, for the last few years, it seems like that's all I ever do is scrappy projects. But I love them. Is the credit for the job? The binding, yes, it's cut from salvage to salvage. That's what I call straight of grain. And then I connect them biasly on the diagonal, which is on the bias. I connect them together on the bias. I've sewn them. When I first started, I was sewing them together end to end to end with the straight. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, it's quick, it's easy. You don't have to line anything up on the, the 45 and sew from corner to corner. It's really nice and all, but you have to press those seams open for that way when you so you're binding on, then you flip it to the other side. For there not to be so much bulk, that seam has to be open. So other than that, I don't do it that way because every time one of those seams land in the corner, when you're putting your binding on and it ends up landing in the corner, because that happens, you end up with a really, really thick 45 miter, and it's very hard to sew through that, as, as opposed to when I do it on the 45 and one of those seams, that seam kind of just spreads through the corner, so it's easier to it's easier to miter that corner. And to stretch. My back is hurting. Do you want to press some of these so that they can see the little finished block? to find oh okay i'm gonna show you guys right here on the screen pay attention to the screen i'm gonna tip you guys down so that you can see it and look at the screen we're gonna show you how this works on a youtube video you're watching a youtube right and you want to go to the description below the video. On a computer, there's my button, there it is. On a computer, it's below the video. If you click on it, like this, you expose all sorts of information below the video. There's tons and tons of links. There's links for my Etsy shop, for my Facebook, for the Instagram, for the group, that quarter shop, Connecting Threads, Sewing Machine Plus, Legit Kits, if you go further down, there is going to be a big, huge paragraph that says you do not, and I do not ask for you guys to give me money or donate, but if you want to, here it is. And there's a GoFundMe tip jar and a PayPal tip jar. Those are below the video. And then there's my address for mail and so on and so forth. Every video has that underneath. On a cell phone, I'd show you, but I don't have a cell phone next to me. It's the same thing. On a cell phone, you would close out your chat which is underneath it like this, you would just press the close out on the chat, the X on it, and then right underneath next to this saying on a cell phone, there's a button that says see more. You would just click that. That's how that works. That is how that works. For those of you who are curious, it still seems zoomed in. Sorry about that guys. There we go.
I'm on the cell phone. You guys are watching me from a cell phone, so that's why I can't show you on a cell phone how it works. Uh, if you want me to text her, I don't know, her phone number. Yeah. Text her. <laughs> yep. So you just click on it that way. Actually, type in explanation bacon and she can click on the links. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you type in the explanation mark and bacon, all one word, there's going to be some links that pop up. Those are my donate links right there. I always forget about that. I forgot about that. Now they're directly in the chat. And you just click on them from the chat. It takes you to the same place. Okay, now he's going to be Yep, iron all these. Just plug it in and turn it on. Now hit the the power button three times so it goes on high. All right. So the iron is warming up for Scotty to yeah iron some of these pieces. Yep. Lincoln, is it ready? No. When it's solid, it's ready. Just sewing up some more of these hourglasses. I think I got a lot done today. I feel like it's gotten quiet. Are there any questions, Scotty? Oh, yeah. Whoop, dropping them. They're going flying. It's full a full on light, no blinking. I'm the same. Duh. <laughs> I think I'm having a pressing problems here. Huh? Thumper is so far so good. He found himself a new hiding spot. So he used to hide under the cave. But like when I've been in the living room before on video and I've showed you guys, he has a a little cave on the couch well he decided because we had to lock him in my bedroom for like four or five days 
And since he was locked in there, we decided to keep something from the living room for him to lay on. So we brought the little, we have a miniature couch rocker. It's like a small little love seat, but it's a rocker and it sits really low. Um, it's a really old piece of furniture. It's like from the 30s or 40s. It's very old. Anyway, so we brought that into my bedroom and then kept the quilt and everything on it. And he decided to make that his bed while he was in my room for four days. Instead of the chairs that are in my room with his quilts on it, <laughs> he decided to go on that. So he made himself a little new cave. When the flooring was finally done and we could put that little recline, or well, it's not a recliner, the little rocking chair back out into the living room, he decided to use it still and use it still and use it still. So this whole entire month now, he has been sleeping in that little, on that re rocking chair under the quilt that way instead of in his little cave that we made for him. So we decided to take down the cave we made for him. We even tried to get him to sleep in the bowl. He has a, uh, a scratch post and it has a bowl on the top of it, a big bowl that they, he could lay in. We washed his, he had a blanket in there and we washed it. And since it don't smell like him no more, he didn't want to lay on that. So he knocked the, the yeah, he blanket. Refused, he, knocked the blanket he knocked the blanket out of that because he won't lay on it with the blanket there. He wants his smell, I think. So it'll be a while before his smell is back on the blanket. But uh, yeah, he uh, he decided to change spots and then when me and scott are binge watching tv in the bedroom in bed he comes and lays at our feet usually guess what under another blanket he is obsessed with caving himself under stuff lately and it might have to do with the fact that he's losing so much hair or he's cold or something i don't know we'll know by summer if he's still hiding under those and there's a cave then we'll know if he's just cold because he's losing hair and has skin problems or what. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's got a new spot. So he's been okay with it though. I don't think he liked being completely locked in my room and never to be let out. Are you gonna give a tour of the house when it's finished? Yes, the whole, I'm making a video and in the process of making that, I've been taking footage here, there, and everywhere, the whole process of everything that we've done. I just have to put the video together, but I was waiting until I finish every room. Well, the bedroom, the living room, the dining room, that's all put back together. This room and the fabric room are not. So as soon as those are back together, I'll be able to show you guys. I didn't get as many um, before pictures as I would have liked. No, this is my quilt room. My fabric room is still purple. It's the purple color I painted it. But Scott painted it and I painted it. Is the flag quilt behind you one of your patterns? Yep. The flag quilt behind me is from the 4th of July in 2020. So it was made on the 3rd of July on a sew Sunday. And that is just being displayed until my design wall is put up. Huh? Oh. Yeah, I'm, I might rotate the quilt out and put other quilts up behind me here and there until I make a design wall. We don't know why he's losing his hair, but he was it bathed. After it started after September, but he was bathed with uh, coconut oil because it said to use coconut oil on him. So he got a bath with coconut oil soap. But if it helps, the soap helps. If I notice a difference, you know, in a couple days, then I might get some coconut oil, actual coconut oil, so that I can rub on him. Or we could just give him a bath more often. Or I, yeah, but that might also make him dry out more, giving yeah, him too many baths. You're only supposed to bathe a cat, never. 
technically they made themselves. But I'm not going to take them to the vet. I'm not take them. Take him to the vet. We've decided upon this. He's 10 years old, and every time we take him to the vet, they say they don't even care about the problem at hand. They tell us he needs his teeth pulled. So we decided just, nah. What are they going to tell us? That he, he needs his teeth pulled. That, of course, is not why he's losing hair, but that's what they'll tell us for $500. The last little quilt I made, I will show you right now. Let me. Hold on, let me sew this. Um, Can you guys see that? It's kind of wonky, but ah, come on. this chair does not like to roll. This carpet is thick. It's a, uh, if you guys didn't know, carpet comes in a one, a two, or a three in thickness. We got a two because I'm, we're hundred percent sure that the original was a one. We got the two and the, um, Padding is half inch, so it's kind wall? of struggling. The postcard wall is not hung up yet. The quilt is on the other side of the room. The postcards are all in a box. I haven't got that far yet. What? Corners of what? I, gave you the whole question. I don't know what video I have of doing corners. Do you have a favorite kind and color of fabric? I like purple and or purple with butterflies. And when it comes to the kind of fabric, I like batiks. Batiks are my favorite. I like the color of them. I like the texture of them. I like how they iron. I like batiks. I like bright colors is really what it is. I like bright, bold color. When it comes to fabric, please tell me what size squares were before cutting in the triangle. This, the half square triangles are one and a half inch. They started out as, um, what were they, three and a quarter inches, I think. And I mean, three and a quarter, one and three quarter inch. And I took them all down to one and a half because. They were kind of in between on the size. And the four patches were four one inch squares put together to make a one and a half inch four patch. Yeah, they're really small. When it's laid out, I didn't at first realize that it was a Jacob's Ladder because I put all four blocks, Jacob's Ladder box together to make one big block. And my brain went, oh, yeah, that's okay. I see. <laughs> so that is my quilt. And it has three, well, technically four borders. It has this is a border, this is a border, this is a border. So there's three pieced borders and then one regular border. And I used up every single piece. I had no four patches left. I had exactly enough. And I had no half square triangles left because every single one of them filled in all of that, all the way around, which created a super awesome looking quilt, if I do say, my, say, my, say, my, say so myself. Can't speak. <laughs> that must mean it's time to get off here. When I start being unable to talk, that means it's time to not be on. <laughs> All right, let's see some of those pieces, Mr. Scotty, so we could show the audience what I have made. Get over there. Walk down your desk. Here's 
pass them to me like this. No, I would. Iron Man shirt for you then. Shirt. Iron Man. So this is what I'm making. So they're all going to have to get trimmed down. My idea with all these was to take them down to two and a half inches. But if they all don't come to about two and a half inches in the first place, then I'm going to have to go with a different number. Yeah, see, this one is not fully two and a half inches. Close, but no cookie. Not even. So, yeah, these are probably not. My idea was to take them down to two and a half, and I can use two and a half inch squares. But I can take these to two inches and use my AccuQuilt Go Baby and cut a whole bunch of two inch squares out of the Go Baby and then do an hourglass block, a two inch square, hourglass block, two inch square, hourglass block, two inch square of all sorts of scrap fabric from all my other scrap fabric because there's so many of these, why not take all the rest of my littler scraps and cut two inch squares out of it all. And I will have all these different combinations of color next to another piece of scrap. There's tons of them. No, I did not do the borders in the video. I made that up as I went and I sat here and I kind of struggled with it because I was, you know, working myself too hard and I took a ton of breaks. So I did not do that on video. All right. So since these are pressed, they get to go in the bag. I'm telling you, this bag is overflowed to the point where it does not close anymore. So it's stuck open and it ripped. So, but I'm still going to keep putting them in here because those are my hourglasses. And there'll be more. I just have to snip all these apart and, you know, press these. And there's a lot here. Any other questions? Just going to leave all this uh, out. Ask them. I've been Any other questions? If you ask something and it didn't get answered, ask now because Scott is now sitting at the computer so he could see. He was ironing. Did he just sneeze? Yeah. What's a go baby? A go baby is an AccuQuilt system that is tiny. I will show you in two seconds. Because yeah, it's right here. He sneezes, he burps. So my go baby is this little dinky thing that was sent to me by a viewer. Little dinky thing. It's well, heavy. it's heavy, it's yes. Heavy. Um, so it's a little unit that looks like this, and then you open it up, oops, let's turn it this way, and you run the thing through here, and the fabric cuts it as you roll it through the thing, the, the dies that go in here. So it's a die that has pieces that cut. This is the Go Baby, so it does little cubes, little tiny stuff. Have you done a project with multiple sides of a scrap you had to wear triangles? Yes. I have done lots of multiple sides of scrappy everything. I love scrappy. But that's scrappy what it, Daffy do. Yes. <laughs> I've done lots of scrappy stuff. From Scooby Doo, remember them? Scrappy, scrappy Dabby Doo. Doo. <laughs> yep. yep, I work with scraps all the time. All the time. That's what I do. All righty, guys. Well, that is what I finished from the last three Sundays. That's done. Now I'm working on this, although I'm not going to stay working on This is just my little side thing, but I didn't want to, like, start grabbing tons of stuff out because I'm trying to get it all organized first. <laughs> I, I have a thing about it being a mess. I don't really want it being a mess. I got to know where all of my stuff is and put it back in order again. And I got to get used to it being in order, which is a different, whole different thing. <laughs>
So, all right, guys, I'm going to get, get off of here and go sit in bed because I'm having struggles with my talking now. <laughs> Will you put the little book in a show? Um, I could put that in a show. It came out really good. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I like my miniature stuff. <laughs> I am going to be adding a hanging sleeve either way because it's going to be for hanging up in the house. So it's going to swap out with all of my wall hangings because I have a ton of wall hangings that I'm going to start swapping out. So yeah, I could put it in a show. It's a lot of detail on such a little quilt. Anyway, anything else? All right, guys, hopefully y'all are enjoying today, having a good Sunday. For those of you that it's nighttime, good night to you. And for those of you who are watching the Super Bowl, hooray for whatever team you're voting for. <laughs> I will see you guys. I don't even know who's in the Super yeah. Bowl. <laughs> so, okay, all right, good night, everybody. Have a, a wonderful week this week. Bye.